Okay guys, let us begin our discussion over the JE advanced pattern exercises for sequences and series. First question is if log 2, log of 2 to the power x minus 1 and log of 2 to the power x plus 3 are in AP, then what is the value of x? The very fact that three, these three terms are in AP means that twice of log of 2 to the power x minus 1 is equal to log 2 plus log of 2x plus 3, right. So from here you get log of 2 to the power x minus 1 whole square equals log of 2 into 2 to the power x plus 3. You know log to the base e is a 1 1 function, so this implies 2 to the power x minus 1 whole square equals 2 into 2 to the power x plus 3 which means 2 to the power x whole square which is 2 to the power 2x plus 1 minus 2 into 2 to the power x equals 2 into 2 to the power x plus 6. So what are you left with is 2 to the power 2x minus 2 into 2 to the power x minus 2 into 2 to the power x which is minus 4 into 2 to the power x plus 1 minus 6 which is minus 5. Okay, so from here, when you basically break the middle term, you get 2 to the power x minus 5 into 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 0. Now, I know that this can never be possible that this is equal to 0. Why? Because 2 to the power x is never negative. So, if this is equal to 0, you basically get, what do you get? 2 to the power x equals minus 1, which is wrong. And therefore, for this expression to be 0, 2 to the power x will have to be equal to 5 or x will be log 5 to the base 2. And therefore, the value of x is log 5 to the base 2 for these three terms to be in arithmetic progression. Next question says what? It says that a, b, c are in a, p and a square, b square, c square are in h, p. If a, b, c follow what? So, a, b, c are in a, p means that twice of b equals a plus c and a square, b square, c square are in h, p means that b square equals twice of a square, c square upon a square plus c square. Clear? Now, it says that if they are in h, p, then what is the condition between a, b, c which they are going to follow? So, understand over here, if I just eliminate b because b is a plus c by 2, I plug it in over here, I get a plus c by 2 whole square equals 2a square c square upon a square plus c square. So, from here what do you get is a square plus c square plus 2ac equals 8a square c square upon a square plus c square. So, this eventually gives you what? Let us see. This gives you a square plus c square whole square plus 2ac minus 8 a square c square equals 0. So, you basically land yourself to the step a plus c whole square plus 2ac multiplied by a minus c whole square equals 0. So, either this is 0 or this is 0, only then this product can be 0. So, if a minus c whole square is 0, this means a minus c is 0, which means a equals c. But if a is equal to c, you get 2b equals 2a, which means b equals a. So, eventually you will get a equals b equals c. So, this expression is 0 or this and this both of them are going to hold simultaneously if a equals b equals c. This is one very condition in which they are going to hold. Another condition is that if this is 0, that means a plus c whole square plus 2ac is 0. Now, a plus c is twice of b. So, you basically get twice of b whole square equals minus 2ac right which means b square equals 
minus 1 by 2 AC. I can write this as minus 1 by 2 A into C or I can write this as A into minus 1 by 2 C. B square equals minus 1 by 2 A into C means minus 1 by 2 A, B and C are in GP and B square equals A into minus 1 by 2 C means A, B and minus 1 by 2 C are in GP. So, either this holds or this holds even then in that situation this particular product will be 0 and hence both these facts of AP and HP are going to hold simultaneously. That means when AB and minus half C and minus half ABC are in GP, these are the three conditions, the three very situations where ABC will be in AP and A square B square C square will be in HP. Next question says what? that A, B, C are real numbers and A, B, C are in A, P. Match the expression in column 1 with the properties or conditions in column 2. Let us see how do we need to tackle with this question. So, A, B, C are already given in A, P. That means you already have that twice of B equals A plus C. A square, B square, C square are also in A, P. That means twice of b square equals a square plus c square. This is already given to you. Fine. Now, a plus c whole square is what? a plus c whole square is 2b whole square. Right? What is 4b square? It is twice of 2b square. But 2b square is a square plus c square. So, this is 2a square plus 2c square. This is a plus c whole square which is a square plus c square plus twice of ac. Now, a 2a square minus a square is a square, 2c square minus c square is c square minus 2ac gives you a minus c whole square is 0 which means a equals c. If a comes out to be equal to c again b comes out to be equal to a comes out to be equal to c. So, you basically get a equals b equals c. So, the first point gets matched to p so, corresponding to A, you basically shade P. Clear? Next, you have A square, B square, C square are in GP. Okay, so A, B, C continue to be in AP. It is given that A square, B square, C square are in GP. That means B square whole square equals A square, C square or B square can be written as plus minus AC. Now, if B square equals AC, this means A, B, C are in GP and if A, B, C come out to be in GP, A, B, C are already given in A, P that means again A equals B equals C. So, A, B, C are coming out to be in GP, they are already given to be in A, P and therefore A equals B equals C. So, corresponding to B also option P is what comes out to be correct. Third we have A square, B square, C square are in H, P. Let us see. A square, B square, C square are in HP. That means B square equals twice of A square, C square upon A square plus C square. Right? Again, because they are given in AP exact same argument like we did in the previous question. Here also again, B will be replaced by A plus C by 2. And this is how the expression is going to just be in terms of A and C. Fine. Now, when you simplify, you get A plus C whole square plus 2AC multiplied by A minus C whole square equals 0. Again, you get either A equals C, which eventually would mean A equals B equals C, or you are going to get that. If this is equal to 0, means what? A plus C will be replaced by 2B. So, you are basically going to get from here, if this is equal to 0 means that A or minus 1 by 2 A, B and C are in GP or A, B minus 1 by 2 C are in GP and from here you are going to get that A equals B equals C. So, corresponding to option number C, P, Q, R all three are going to be shaded. P also, Q also and R also. Fine. Then you have D that is A plus B plus C is 3 by 2. Then what among those are going to hold? So, if A plus B plus C is 3 by 2. 
So, you have a plus b plus c is 3 by 2. You already know a plus c is twice of b. If a plus c is twice of b, twice of b plus b is 3 by 2. Thrice of b is 3 by 2, b is 1 by 2. So, d is basically going to be shaded to s. Fine. Moving on to the next question we have, suppose 4 distinct positive numbers. So, suppose 4 distinct positive numbers a1, a2, a3, a4 are in gp. If that is the situation, I am going to say let the first term of that gp be small a and the common ratio be small r. So, you get a1 is a, a2 is ar, a3 is ar square and a4 is ar cube. b1 is a1. So, b1 is a. b2 is b1 plus a2. b1 is a and a2 is ar. So, a plus ar which is a1 plus r. b3 is what? b3 is b2 plus a3. b2 plus a3. b2 is b1 plus a2. b1 is a. a plus a2. What is it? a. b1 is a a plus a2. So, we have already written that b3 is b2 plus a3. That means a 1 plus r plus a r square which means a common 1 plus r plus r square and similarly you get b4 as a common 1 plus r plus r square plus r cube. Statement 1 says that b1, b2, b3, b4 are neither in AP nor in GP. Let us check. If I talk about a p, what is b 2 minus b 1? b 2 minus b 1 is a plus a r minus a which is a r. What is b 3 minus b 2? b 3 is a plus a r plus a r square minus a minus a r. So, you have a r square and these two are not equal. So, yes b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4 are not equal in AP. But are they not in GP also? Let us check that they are in GP or not. So, if I talk about B2 by B1, B2 is A 1 plus R, B1 is A, so you are just left with 1 plus R and B3 by B2, B3 is A 1 plus R plus R square and here you have a 1 plus r. So, you can very clearly see that both of them are again not coming out to be equal. So, they are not in gp as well and therefore, statement 1 is true that they are neither in ap nor in gp. Are they in hp? Are they in hp or not? So, for hp what do you check basically? What do you check for hp? that the reciprocals should be in AP. So, B1, B2, B3, B4 are in HP or not that means 1 by B1, 1 by B2, 1 by B3, 1 by B4 are in AP or not. So, for that 1 by B2 minus 1 by B1 if it comes out to be equal to 1 by B3 minus 1 by B2 that means yes they are in AP but you are going to find they are not going to come out to be equal in which case the reciprocals are not coming out to be in AP so the terms will not be in HP. So, these terms are in HP this is false and this is true statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false clear. Next is this particular series is given to us. Statement 1 is giving you the sum of this series, statement 2 is also given. So, which is giving you the correct sum is what we need to find. So, here if you carefully observe this, it is already given to you, the general term is given to you tr that is the rth term is given as r square upon 2r minus 1, 2r plus 1. We need to compute the sum. So, what we do is we first of all multiply 4. Why am I doing that? because when you multiply this you get this. So, you get 4 times T r equals 4 r square minus 1 plus 1 upon 2 r minus 1 2 r plus 1. So, I have created this particular product above also that is 4 r square minus 1 plus 1 why because now I can write this as 1 plus 
1 upon 2r minus 1, 2r plus 1 and this is nothing but 4 times tr, right? So, 4 times tr has come out to be equal to 1 plus 1 by 2 times 1 by 2r minus 1 minus 1 by 2r plus 1. It is very simple, 2 was coming out extra, so I have multiplied and divided by 2. Now, one, the moment you get this, what is the next step? Next step is to actually take the summation because you need to find the sum of this series. So, you get 4 times summation tr, 4 times summation tr is going to be coming out to be what? This is 1, this is going to be summation 1 r going from 1 to n plus 1 by 2 summation 1 upon 2 r minus 1 minus 1 upon 2 r plus 1. This is 4 times summation t r. This is just n plus 1 by 2 times. Now, you can very easily see you will have 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 5, isn't it? See, if you put r equals 1, you get 1 upon 2 minus 1, which is 1. If you put r equals 1 over here, you get 3. So, you get 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 3 minus 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 5 minus 1 upon 7 and so on, you are going to get minus 1 upon 2n plus 1. So, everything is going to get cancelled, you will just be left with 1 minus 1 upon 2n plus 1. Clear? So, from here what do you have is n plus, this is 2n plus 1 minus 1, it is 2n upon 2n plus 1 or n upon 2n plus 1 because 2, 2 gets cancelled. So, you have n into 2n plus 1 plus n whole upon 2n plus 1. So, n comes out common, you are left with 2n plus 1 plus 1 that is 2n plus 2. So, 2 comes out common, you have n plus 1 upon 2n plus 1 and therefore, this is 4 times of summation tr. So, summation tr will be this thing whole upon 4 which is n n plus 1 whole upon twice of 2 n plus 1. n n plus 1 whole upon twice of 2 n plus 1. Yes, this is true. So, statement 1 is true. What about statement 2? It is 1 upon 2 n minus 1 2 n plus 1. So, general term will be equal to what? It will be just r upon what will it be? It will be r upon 2r minus 1, 2r plus 1, not even r, it will just be equal to 1 because that is what it is. Fine. You can very easily write it as 1 by 2, 1 by 2r minus 1, minus 1 by 2r plus 1. When you take the summation, sum comes out to be equal to what? This, this means 1 by 2 comes out common, we just now saw this comes out to be 1 minus 1 by 2n plus 1. So, this is 2n plus 1 minus 1, that is 2n upon 2n plus 1, 2, 2 gets cancelled, n upon 2n plus 1, but over here it is given 1 upon 2n plus 1. So, statement 1 is true, statement 2 is false. Fine. Next, what is it that you have? You have given a sequence, if it is possible to find a function f of r such that this holds, then this holds. Now, you need to quest answer some of the particular questions. What are the questions? Let us see. Questions are, what is the sum of this series? Again, it is summation 1 upon 4 r square minus 1 are going from 1 to infinity. Now, this is an infinite series. So, this comes out to be very simple. This is 2r minus 1, 2r plus 1 are going from 1 to infinity or what I can do is r going from 1 to n and limit n tends to infinity. It is 1 in the same thing, right? So, this comes out to be equal to what? 1 by 2 summation 1 by 
2r minus 1 of minus 1 by 2r plus 1 and this is summation or let me just write it as limit n tends to infinity. Summation has already been kept. Fine. So, this comes out to be 1 minus 1 by 2n plus 1 into 2 into 1 by 2 and this is limit n tends to infinity. This is again 2n plus 1 minus 1 which is 2n upon 2n plus 1 but 2 2 gets cancelled you are left with n upon 2n plus 1. n tends to infinity or rather than that just here also if you apply n tends to infinity you get 1 upon infinity is 0. So, you get 1 by 2 minus 0 which is 0. So, your which is 1 by 2. So, your answer is 1 by 2 minus 0 which is 1 by 2. Okay. Next what is it that you have? You have if u 1 is 1 and u n plus 1 is 2 u n plus 1 then u n plus 1 is equal to what? So, if u n plus 1 minus u n if I consider u n plus 1 is 2 u n plus 1 minus. So, u n will be what? u n will be when you replace n by n minus 1. When you replace n by n minus 1 you actually get u n. So, this will be 2 u n minus 1 plus 1. So, this is twice of u n minus u n minus 1. Right. Now, next what? This is again twice of what is this? So, u n plus 1 minus u n is u n minus u n minus 1. u n minus u n minus 1 will be twice of again since so 2 square u n minus 1 minus u n minus 2. And this is going to go on. You will be left with 2 to the power n minus 1 u 2 minus u 1. u 1 is 1 and what is u 2? u 2 will be 2 times u 1 plus 1 that is 2 into 1 plus 1 that is 3. So, this is 3 minus 1. So, this is 2 to the power n minus 1 into 2 which is 2 to the power n. This is not u n plus 1 this is u n plus 1 minus u n. So, u n plus 1 is coming out to be 2 to the power n minus u n. Right? This will be 2 to the power n, this u n plus 1 is 2 to the power n minus u n. So, u n will be 2 to the power n minus 1 minus u n minus 1, right. Then u n minus 1 will be 2 to the power n minus 2 minus u n minus 2. This is this, so u n will be 2 to the power n minus 1 minus u n, so this will be minus this plus this. And the moment you write this, what are you left with is now u n minus 1 will be u n minus 1 will be what? This is u n plus 1. u n plus 1 is 2 to the power n minus u n. Fine. So, u n is 2 to the power n minus 1 minus u n minus 1. Right. So, this will be plus. Similarly, when you are going to carry this forward again, carry this forward. Why? Because this will be u n minus 1. u n minus 1 is 2 to the power n minus 2. This is plus 2 to the power n minus 2 minus u n minus 2. When you carry this forward this argument you basically get 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 as your answer. Fine and therefore u n plus 1 actually comes out to be equal to 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 1. Carrying this forward same argument carrying it forward and forward and forward you get this. After that you have sum of this series is what? Let us see what is the sum of this series. So, you are given T r is 1 upon r into r plus 1 r plus 2. That means r T r is equal to 1 upon r plus 1 into r plus 2. r T r is this. Very conveniently I can say this is same as r plus 3 times T r plus 1. You can check. T r plus 1 will be what? T r plus 1 will be r plus 1, r plus 2, r plus 3. I just have r plus 1, r plus 2. So, I multiply by r plus 3 so that r plus 3, r plus 3 can get cancelled. So, you have this which you can write as r plus 2 plus 1. So, that is r plus 2 
times T R plus 1 or R plus 1 times T R plus 1 plus twice of T R plus 1. So, this gives you R T R or other than that let me write it as 2 times T R plus 1 equals R T R minus R plus 1 T R plus 1. So, when you need to find the summation this is r going from 1 to n minus 1 because till t n you need to find this is what 1 t 1 minus 2 t 2 plus 2 t 2 minus 3 t 3 plus 3 t 3 minus 4 t 4. So, you are getting to get the terms all cancelled you just have 1 t 1 minus what is what is n plus 1 t n plus 1 t n plus 1 will be 1 upon n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 right. So, what will be n plus 1 T n plus 1 it will be n plus 1 into 1 upon n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 n plus 1 n plus 1 gets cancelled you just have minus 1 upon n plus 2 n plus 3 clear. So, next next is let us look at the argument now. What is T1? You are going to replace this by summation T r plus 1 r going from 1 to n comes out to be equal to 1 by 2 minus now see I am replacing this n by infinity. So, you basically get 1 upon infinity is 0 you are just left with 1 by 2 and this 2 from here makes it actually 1 by 4 and that is what is the sum that is 1 by 4. 4 because you are tending everything to infinity. So, this term gets just vanished fine. Next what you have is sum of this series is what? Let us see here T r is different the r th term general term is very much different. What is the r th term? It is r into r plus 1 r plus 2 right. Now, r plus 3 times t r equals r times t r plus 1. r times t r plus 1 will be what? r times t r plus 1 will be r plus 1, r plus 2, r plus 3. r, r plus 1, r plus 2, r plus 3, r plus 3 is extra. So, that is why that is what I am writing over here. r plus 3 times t r equals r times t r plus 1. And therefore, this can be written as R T R plus 3 T R which is 4 T R minus R T R equals R T R plus 1. So, this becomes what 4 T R equals R T R plus 1 minus what is this? This is R T R plus 4 T R minus R T R. So, here what you are going to get is this gets cancelled this gets cancelled. So, we are left with R T R plus 1 that is it fine. The moment you get this how basically you extend your argument to get the sum of this series is what you need to think now. So, now once we have defined the general term also and established the relation between consecutive terms of this series we now need to get to the sum of this particular series. So, think upon it and then we are going to get back to the question and the one after this also. Okay. So, over here as we were trying to basically resolve this issue we had T r equals r r plus 1 r plus 2. So, r plus 3 T r is r times T r plus 1. So, r T r plus 3 T r 3 T r can be written as 4 T r minus T r 4 T r minus T r. The moment you get this what you have is 4 T r plus r minus 1 t r equals r t r plus 1. So, you eventually get 4 t r equals r t r plus 1 minus r minus 1 t r. And therefore, when you take the summation, the moment you take the summation, the infinite summation actually comes out to be 4 factorial n plus 3 c 4. That is what you get it. What do you get? 4 factorial 
n plus 3c4 very easily you are going to get this particular thing as your answer. Fine, that is how you get the sum of this particular series. So, here also in the previous question what, do, what did we see? In here when we had established that un plus 1 minus un was 2 to the power n right in that case next step was to say that un plus 1 is 2 to the power n plus un fine. So, you keep on extending the things you keep on extending the things this becomes 2 to the power n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 and so on and that is what gives you 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 1. So, just if you have done the very establishment of result for one particular variable it just keeps on consecutively getting the same thing gets forwarded. Same thing gets forwarded when you replace n by n minus 1, n by n minus 2, n by n minus 3 and so on. Clear? So, we are through with the sum of the series also let us look at the next question. What is the next question? If x n is 1 square plus 2 into 2 square plus 3 square plus 2 into 4 square and so on and that is also given to you like this n n plus 1 whole square whole upon 2 if n is even then calculate this. What is this? So, if you can very nicely see x 51 can be written as x 50 plus 51 square right. What is x 50? It is given to you 50 is even it is given to you as 50 into 51 square whole upon 2 plus 51 square. So, this gives you 25 into 51 square plus 51 square. So, 51 square comes out common. This is 51 square multiplied by 26, right? That is what happens to be the scenario. So, this is x 51, x 51 and this is 26. 26 is what? 13 into 2. 13 into 2 is 26. So, x 51 upon 51 square into 13 comes out to be what? x 51 upon 51 square into 13 comes out to be equal to 2. So, x 51 upon 51 square into 13 is the integer 2. Clear? So, revise all the questions very nicely, practice them thoroughly, they are very important. That is it from my side. Thank you.